All right, thank you everybody for coming again today. Um, we're delving off into another uh, set of scriptures. We're going into the unnatural world uh, today. So let's bow our heads, bring this thing in, in together. Dear Heavenly Father, anoint this messenger today. Let this fruit uh, seed go forth and bring forth great fruit. Father, open our eyes and our hearts to the message today. Let this seed fall on good ground. Let your word not return unto you void, but let it accomplish that which you please and prosper in the thing where you sin. Amen. So here we go. So what we're seeing around us is a, uh, an amalgamation of events come together at a certain point in time. Uh, and what you're seeing is that culmination, okay? Uh, the unnatural world, which did, what I'm, we've gone through these studies before, but what I'm showing you is that the unnatural world, the technology world, the transhumanist agenda, where they're, they're, they're preparing the children's minds, they're pre preparing our minds to accept man's creation. Okay, understand that. It's man's creation. Okay? The unnatural world. What we are witnessing today is the leaving of the natural world. Understand the natural nature, God's world, his creation. Okay? That's why we're going into the creation built by man. He who expo uh, 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 claims he is God but sits in the temple of God. That's man thinking he's God. Okay? So let's get off into this study today. The iron mixing with the clay. And uh, this is context where I'm going with it today, okay? Daniel 2.42. And as the toes of the feet were part iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas, whereas thou sawest iron mixed with, clay, with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Stop right there. The seed of men means all men. Okay, understand this. When it starts talking about seeds and stuff of that nature, we're talking about mankind. So you've got iron trying to mix with clay. What did would God breathe the breath of life into? The clay. Adam, mankind. First man, Adam, earthly. Okay? But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. We've gone through this. We Remember we went through Sophia, the artificial intelligence. I'm going to get off into this a little bit further today in our critical thinking study, but understand, this is the merger that we're going into. The technological hive mind, okay? That's where we're going. It's the technocracy. It's, it, it will be the boot on the face of mankind from here on out. They'll control the knowledge where everybody else is just dumbed down zombies, okay? And in those days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Uh, here, let me, uh, let me back up. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. Okay? And in, those, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. What's, when, when is that kingdom coming? That's the end of this age. It's that day. It's when New Jerusalem sets forth. That, that, that's streets of uh, clear gold, transparent gold. That, this is that day. And the kingdom shall not, not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these earthly kingdoms, the man's kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. All right. This is what you see everywhere you go. Zombies. Zombies. People complain uh, about me not being progressive in the 21st century. I'm an old cuckoo puff. Tell me, kiddos, is this the kind of progress you speak of? This is one perfect example. This is what happens everywhere you go. No one speaking to anyone. No one speaks to in, in person. This is how we communicate now. Look at that. Next time you watch a show called Walking Dead or any of these zombie movies, understand it is the highest form of mockery towards us because we are the zombies. We have an anti-intellectual society. No one wants to know anything that's worth knowing. Everybody thinks they already know everything, and they don't know anything. And they don't really want to socialize. Well, that's either. right. Well, you just don't want to know. Then you go to the willful ignorance. There's ignorance, and then there's willful ignorance. When I sh it's, it's like Yuri Bismarck. I showed y'all the KGB uh, ex-spy who said, you can't take the banana pills out your ear. You're not going to listen to the truth until you got the what? The boot kick in the butt. That's, that's going to be what, when it happens. The image of the beast. Now this is all refresher 
Okay, this is what we're going through today. The image of the beast. Revelation 13, 15, and he had power to give life unto the image. I think most people pass this up. Pass this phrase up. What's an image? It's not real. Okay? This is what's happening to the Hollywood trickery, NASA trickery. They are, through, through uh, deception of, of technology, they are projecting unto you something real that is not real. It's magic. Movie magic. It's wood from the holly tree. Okay? The image is your one-eyed God and your technology. The one-eyed God, what Paul Paul Lars used to call this, the one-eyed God. He knew what he was speaking of. It's the TV, slow drift of morality. Unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay? And it's going to come that time. And it's coming now, just with the perversion. If you don't, if you don't like homosexual, if you don't like, if you don't think children should have to be uh, wee wees chopped off and be made into girls, you, you're just not ready to come into our world. You're either going to uh, uh, submit to it or not. It's coming, folks. Well, look at these crazy folks. They're crazy. And he calls them all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Understand it. It will have implications on how you spend, on how you buy. It will be connected to commerce. That is the most important part of this. Uh, and if, if, man, I wish I was more ready. I'm just not. I, I don't have the, the funds to be as ready as I would like to be. Uh, and that's part of the struggle. Because guess what they're going to do when it comes, when it happens? You're going to have to make a choice between life and death. Now, are most people ready to make that choice? No, they are not. What did, uh, uh, in the book of Job, what does Satan say? Skin for skin, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Okay? All that a man hath will he give for his life. We are the only creatures on earth with the threat of death that can change our, our, our mind and lie to ourselves. No other animal, you can't take a dog, a cat, threaten it, with, threaten it with its life, and it start doing what you want it to do. Only mankind can. That's why it's such a, 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 a productive tool of uh, extortion and blackmail. And understand this, right after this, he goes into the number of his name. Okay, which is what? It's the, it's the number of man, 666. Six, six. Yeah. So the graven image. Habuka 218, what profited the graven image that the maker thereof hath? Graven it. The molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusteth therein to make dumb idols. How can anything dead, that's what that's that's either cut wood, stone, anything else be made into an idol of worship? It's dead, it's not alive, it's not natural, it's not living. You're worshiping something dead. You know, you see it all the time. People hold their little beads, they hold their little things, and that's dead. Don't worship it. Don't even use it. it it's right here in the Bible. Woe unto him that saith to the wood, awake to the dumb stone. Arise, it shall teach. It can't. It's dead. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there's no breath in it at all in the midst of it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. So here we go. Where's the temple? Where's the temple? Huh? Within yourself. That's right. Why did the Jews reject Christ? Because they wanted an earthly kingdom, an earthly temple. They wanted rulership here and now. They didn't understand it. Where is the temple of God? 1 Corinthians 3.16 Know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Understand this, folks. They are destroying the temple with their poisons, in the air, food, water, everything. They are destroying the temple of God. And through ignorance, we consent. Okay? 1 Corinthians 3, 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? Okay? 1 Corinthians 6, 19. 
what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? 2 Corinthians 6, 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So we're not looking at the stones. So the image, the iron mixing with the clay, is going to what? It's going to destroy the temple of God. Understand this. The Jew thought the temple was of stone. That was the problem. They didn't understand. My word is spirit. Okay? And they didn't understand that. They couldn't understand because they were carnal. Matthew 27, 4, and this is where they mock and Christ. You remember he told them after three days I'll build the temple back up? They thought he was talking about the temple. They didn't understand. And saying, Thou that destroyeth the temple, temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. Say, get come off that cross. They're mocking him, scoffers. If thou be the Son of God, come down from that cross. Mocking. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him, but the scribes and the elders said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. He be the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe him. Just, just, just breaking these things to you, folks. And here uh, Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians 2.4, Who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So everything I've showed y'all the last four weeks, you've got the Sanhedrin, you've got all these folks moving forward with this building of the temple, the third temple in, in Jerusalem. Is that God? No, that's not God, folks. It's not God. It has nothing to do with our God, the living God. This would be Apollo. This would be all the other ones. This is not the living God. Remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now you know it withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Okay? That's the Antichrist. He, he's here already. Always here. Always here. Spirit of inequity doth already work. Okay? So, look, I'm just going to show you the number of a man. I want to show you this. This is the Hebrew alphabet, okay? The, the vibe is the nail, like this. It's the vibe, which is a six. Gematria. It has value, money value, it, it has a numerical value. So you got the monster, which is the nail, nail, nail. So that's the 666. Then we have old Walt Disney right here. They just had, so happened they had to draw the 666 in there. And it goes, here's the Mickey ears at Disney, the art of Disney. There's your 666. I mean, it's in everything. Fox, uh, English, Gematria comes up to 666. You've got 666 in your, I mean, it's just everywhere. This is 666. What I'm showing you is that they're showing you that they are the number of man. Here, right here, in the Microsoft logo, that's just a dual. It's got the 666 six, six right here, but it's also got the dual 33. Backwards 33s. What's the 33 is a Freemasonry number. That's the highest, uh, highest level in Scottish right Freemasonry. But it also has a huge significance in the occult. So does the number 13. There's a bunch of numbers that have huge significance in the, uh, in the occult. And I'm just showing you this, folks. If this is all in front of our faces and we never see it. I do want to commend Betty. Uh, last week while we were on our trip to San Antonio, uh, we, uh, on the TV they had a little second show of uh, the Wonder Woman. And Betty called it out. Hey, look at that on her head. She noticed the star of Ishtar. The Wonder Woman was playing the part of the Queen of Heaven. Inanna, Ishtar, Diana, whichever inanimation you want to call her, that's what she was playing. Okay? You'll be amazed once you, once you start bringing this stuff to the front of your mind and you start noticing it everywhere. And it doesn't seem so much like a conspiracy theory anymore. And they bring it all to the kids. It's all to the kids. Well, they, well they, they're making fun of it right now. Almost everything these kids watch, they talking about the Illuminati. They don't even know what the Illuminati is. They don't even know that on May Day, uh, the year 1776, that Adam, Adam Weishaupt of the Jesuits 
which was a crypto Jew, started the Bavarian Illuminati. It's a real deal. But now they've done made, made it such fun, like it's a game. It's a joke. It's a joke. And that's the purpose of it. They've done made it into a joke, but it goes way deeper than the Illuminati. We go into the Jesuits. We get in, into the Kabbalistic Jew. We get into the Catholic, uh, Catholic Church. We get into real control systems on this earth, and people run around here talking about, oh, it's the Illuminati. Ignorance. Ignorance. They have no clue what they're talking about. So I found this today. What were those? Those were, those were logos, right? Do you know that the very word, the very word logos, the symbology, is the theft of the, the word, our creator, the eternal one, Yahushua HaMashiach? Because in the beginning was the word. What's the Hebrew word right there? Where's the Greek word right there? The logos. So all this symbology, remember, there's power in words. We have been had our language stolen from us. We are living in a, English is an amalgamation of many languages, okay? Mainly Latin, German, and French, okay? But inside the that secret language. There's another language spoken right now that we know we don't even know. Legal ease. That's why you have to hire an attorney to to represent you because you are claiming you're ignorant of the law. That's why you have to hire an attorney because nobody knows what the law is. But here we go. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing. Uh, was anything made that was made? Here's the word for the word. It's the logos. That's why you got your, your demonic, and the name is logos. Understand this, folks. It's always inverted. It never was by an accident. Ever. There's no such thing as coincidence on this earth. Okay? And I'm just showing you from three, uh, G3004, something said, including the thought, by implication of topic, Subject of discourse, also reasoning, the mental faculty or motive, by extension, a computation, specifically with the article, the divine expression. That is Christ. That's the Logos. And it's the eternal. It was there from the beginning. Understand, just, just understand these simple truths right here in our faces with our language. They, they shove their garbage down our throats. So no wonder why they take something that's a logo, logos, and turn it into something perverted. It's amazing the things that you, you start seeing uh, when you catch it. So everything is inverted. We understand this. Now Galatians 5, 19, that when we went through this a couple weeks ago. And this is where I want to go with the studies more and more. I'm also, I, I had uh, so many great reviews last week uh, about the study. Uh, I'm going to start going back that route again. 519, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. This is the world we're living in. Okay? Yeah. Envians, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of, this, of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is the world we're living in, folks. We'll turn. I didn't turn on my TV but five minutes today and watch a little news segment. Let me tell you I just turned it right back off. It's riots here, riots there, protest here. Fear, 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 World War III, World War III. So it's Fabian socialism. It, it, it is disgusting to me. My spirit rejects it. They want us to hate one another. They want to divide us down the middle, and then they're going to force us to come. Look, the revolution here in this country is so close, people have no, no clue. It's about to go, go off. They're trying to force it. But now we're so fluoridated that they can't get us to do it. Do you understand that? They've poisoned us so much, and we're so docile, and we enjoy our slavery so much, they haven't been able to kick it off. 250 years ago, it would have done, been, it would have done ignited. Just the pride of the of the man would have ignited it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. When you're, when you're doing things in love, long-suffering, meekness, low temper. What's meekness? Uh, humility. Okay? And not, not having to have something in return. Doing it out of the kindness of your heart. Uh, if, there is no law. You're not subject to the law. And the greatest is love. Okay? 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. This is what kicks me off to, to the umpteenth degree. I didn't reach my adult mind until I was 35 years old. I was robbed. And it really ticks me off. My education system that I went through, my upbringing, everything else around me robbed me of becoming a man sooner. Reaching my adult mind. This is why we have suspended adolescence. This is why I've got cousins and brothers and, and things that are in their late 30s that are still children. Put away the childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face. I know in part, but then shall I know all, even as I also am known. And now about it, faith, hope, and love. That's what charity means. Mm -hmm. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So one of the things that comes when you take the spirit of Yahushua HaMashiach in, it, the, that spirit is the spirit of love. I can accept other people's beliefs. I can accept other things. I don't have, doesn't mean I have to join them. I don't have to join them. The enemy of my, my enemy is my, my what? Friend. Friend. Okay? Understand that. And a lot of people get so dogmatic in their belief systems that they don't understand this simple truth. All of humanity that is not in a bloodline that is the ruling class, okay, that's every single president we've ever had. That's every single everybody. They've got, they've got their tiered rulership over us, and we're not a part of it. Okay? Anybody that is even halfway awake is my friend. Doesn't mean we always agree. Stupidity is rewarded in this society. I'm going to read this. Whether it's Paris Hilton, Kim Kardashian, or whoever, stupidity is certainly celebrated. Being a effing idiot is a valuable commodity in this culture because you're rewarded significantly. This is the saddest thing ever. The Cash Me Outside girl. Instant fame. Have you anybody ever seen her? No? Huh? She is the stupidest little girl I've ever met in my life. But she's a millionaire now. And people sit there and watch that stupidness and act like childness and think it's good. She was stupid on TV anyways. So. That's right. To the Kardashians. We worship these dummies. Morons. Idiots. That is, a, that is the microcosm of the macrocosm. That is a glimpse into your society. That we're a society that is so ignorant, they worship morons. They idolize morons. To suspended adolescence, which is rampant in our society. Rampant. No one is growing up and reaching their adult mind. This is planned. And it's sad. It's sad because we watch it. Look, there's not a family. There's not a family in America or probably on this earth that has not been touched by this epidemic, what I'm talking about right now, because it's the drug culture. It's, it's everything else where children are having children. The grandparents have to raise the babies. All this garbage because people can't grow up. So I'm going to go back to it one more time. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away those childish things. So put them away. I really like that scripture. But God is love. So we have to get back to it. Okay? That doesn't mean we bend over backwards and accept the evil. That is wrong. That is wrong. If rebuke, resort, chastise, and all... 
long suffering. You've got the word to stand in. Be your truth. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is what? Love. It's pretty simple. And this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son in the world, that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for, uh, for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought also to love one another. So I get, just understand this, folks. This is, you've got a choice to, under, to, to either be a part of the world or step out of it. Okay, step, step out of it. Continue, 1 John 4, 12. No man, no man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. That's the temple. Okay? So understand this. And what I'm preparing you for, folks, and, and for anybody watching anywhere, is for when that day comes, and it will, where everything is going to be tied to this cryptocurrency and, and all this other stuff, and this, the technological age will be here. Have the strength and moral fortitude to understand that this life is just, just a passing moment. Because it's coming. It is coming. If You better start preparing to feed yourselves and have stocks of food. God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of, of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Yahushua HaMashiach is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. So nobody understands this. I deal with a lot of secular folks uh, uh, on Twitter and stuff like that. They've got a lot of great ideas. None of them will ever understand what happened to me on that day. I can't tell anybody that. I've tried to explain it to people. Nobody knows. From that day forward, that was the day that the spirit of Yahushua and Mashiach entered into my heart. My life has changed. No one else can ever take that away. It will never go away. That was a changing. And it was love. It was pure love that entered into me. It was an understanding that I had to do what was the hard thing, get up here in front of people, start spreading this truth, any way and every way I could. And and be doggone, I didn't care what anybody else thought about me. Didn't care. Didn't care because I've been chastised, I've been mocked and scoffed the whole way. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. God in him. So love doesn't mean that we bend over backwards to make everybody happy. True love is telling the truth at all times. At all times. There's ways to go about it that I'm learning to be a little bit better about. But for the most part, truth is love. Truth is life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The merger of man and machine. My thoughts I'm conveying here today is love is an unseen force, just like emotions, logic, reasoning, passion, or will. Okay? Understand, you cannot measure these things. They're there. Which proves that we have a spirit. Understand that. You cannot measure any of these. This is the materialistic, atheistic mindset. Everything has to be measured. Okay? It cannot be measured or calculated, but it is there. The digital age is the removing of the human element. Love, empathy, meekness, all these things, the caring element of humans. And having it replaced, sitting in the temple of God, with an unnatural man, and that's man's creation, the unnatural. It's a copy. It's a fake. It's a doppelganger. 
So I, I know most of you don't know, but chemtrails and the dark side of transhumanism, this all plays a part. We're terraforming our earth. We're making everything an ionized metallic atmosphere. This is the transhumanist movement. It's represented by the H and the plus. This is a real movement. The Mormons are involved in it and their uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are involved with it. There's other people involved with it. This is a real movement. Is an international, cultural, and intellectual movement with an eventual, eventual goal of fundamentally transforming the human condition by developing and make, making widely available technologies to greatly enhance human intellectual, physical, and psychological capacity. So look, why do you you think it's by by happen chance that they putting all these superhero movies on uh, uh, out for these kids? No, it's on purpose. On purpose. It's to make them want to be superhumans. Oh, I man, I'd do anything to have to do that. Mm -hmm. Jump real high. Well, that's the point. They're gonna bypass. They're gonna bypass the natural for the unnatural. He always, the devil always makes it look like it's a good thing. Okay. Technocracy is the end goal, and I, I put this in here, and this is what we're in now. This is a top-down system. Okay, it's a top-down system. Technocracy, the government or control of society or industry by an elite of technical experts. An instance or application of technocracy, plural noun technocracies, an elite of elect technical experts. These are the people that have social status that dictate to you their expertise all the time. And we go, oh, well, let the expert handle it. Folks, we're living in a technocracy. Mm -hmm. They hold all the knowledge, and here we are down here just slaves. and no longer in the image of God. The image of God will be removed uh, in man's creation, and do what thou wilt will be the whole of the law. Very small critical thinking study today, but I'm focused on our control grid that is being formed around us, okay? That's what I studied on this week, that's what I brought forth, that's what I looked into. Each and every individual must stop consent consenting to this agenda. How do we do that? We consent by our ignorance. Ignorance is consent. We, cons we consent when we accept the goods and services provided. The bells and the whistles, so to speak, being entertained to death. So I'm just going to show you. I've showed you all this before. This is government derived from the Latin verb go uh, governo, governo meaning the control, the Latin noun means mentis, meaning mind, to control the mind. And just to further propagate this, this is why you have, so people, you, you'll go find all kind of junk on, on Google where mint doesn't mean mind. But let me show you something. Mint is Latin. It has the meaning mind, exactly why you have demented and mentality. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's mind. You'll find all kind of lies and garbage out there. But this is the Latin of it. It means mind, period. Okay? Period. So govern is the rulership of your mind. Your next phase of your control system is entertained. Okay? Enter, among, tame, to hold, meant the control of your mind. It's holding your mind captive with entertainment. Understand this. You're being entertained to death. It's the Roman bread circus. Your goal here is to reach a higher understanding of your reason here. If we go around just spending our whole lives watching a bunch of soap operas and junk, we're right there where they want us. We're, in, we're right there in their control system. Entertainment is holding the mind captive. The language we use is very important to grasp, my friends. And this is just the Organic Act of 1871, a body corporate. Uh, it, it, we are a corporate entity. I'll, I'll get into that more at a later date. I'll just go th through here. This is George Orwell, anybody that has read 1984, understands he was very well into the occult. Political language is designed to make lies sound truthful. 
and murder respectable. It's pretty much what you have with politics. Uh, I found something on the uh, on the web, and it, it you know because it is a compound word poly tick. Poly's many tick is a blood a blood sucking sucking parasite. That's not the actual meaning of the word, by the way, but it you know it's just kind of funny. <laughs> Here's the truth. This is your technocracy. Today, scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments. And they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. This man, Nikola Tesla, if anybody wants to ever go look into some uh, wonderful things, uh, that charlatan that I showed you last week, Einstein, was built to knock this man down. And this man, who was a true genius, died penniless and broke in a hotel room. All right, so let's go to our critical thinking study today. I thought this was pretty cool right here. I found this. I can't even remember how I found it, but let's see. Well, how did I make it a full screen? I did that the other day. Oh, there we go. All right, so this is General Pat. Well, what's going on here? Oh, whoa, whoa. What do I got going on? Okay. Oh, give me one second, folks. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. We got it now. We on top. So I found this the other day. This was. And uh, y'all may know, this was General Patton's. Uh, you remember General Patton? This is his diaries. Uh, I found them on the, uh, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna read a little bit uh, for you, let's see. Let's go back one, one more. Uh, I think, page 53, page 52, let's see. There we go. This is General Patton's diary that I found. This is a very apparent Semitic influence in the press. They are trying to do two things. First, implement communism, and second, see that all businessmen of German ancestry and non-Jewish uh, uh, ascendants are thrown out of their jobs. They have utterly lost the Anglo-Saxon conception of justice and field, that a man can be kicked out because someone else says he is a Nazi. They were evidently quite shocked when I told them I would kick nobody out without successful proofs of guilt before a court of law. And he goes on and on. He talks about Zionism. This is General Patton. Understand this is 1950s. They got rid of him, too. I just wanted to show you. That was actually 1945. Uh, All right, so on to what the real, the real gist is. Um, this is Incutel. I've showed y'all time and time again uh, that your Googles, your Facebooks, all this technology comes from one source and one source only. It comes from your intelligence services. Incutel is a new partnership between the CIA and private sector. Now understand this is this is 10, 1999, as soon as the web come out. And uh, essentially what they did they were the startup for all these services. So that means they hold, uh, hold the, what, what's the word I'm looking for, the proprietary, uh, if, if, they, if they fund it, they, they are the... It's, uh, they would have uh, majority stock ownership. Okay, so the CIA holds majority stock ownership in all these companies because they started them. But here's the whole thing, they did it, they, they come through, and that's how they integrated all this technology together against us. Just understand that. 25 cutting edge firms funded by the CIA. And here's your video surveillance companies. Let's, let's just look at a few of them. Turning the ink at digital pens that speed up data field collection so they can go spy through your pen, uh, pens. Synthesizes the foreign chatter. That's the AIs for your uh, when you go go on a website and says you want to chat. That's the AI algorithm that talks to you. And it's all this stuff preserving biological materials. And it's all these every single one of them. You'll find out that the CIA is entrenched in every single company. And what do they do? 
Well, they go in there, and who ends up with the patents on this new technology? The government. The government. This is something most people don't know about, the sentient world simulation that's being played out in front of us. This is why, this is why you have the chaos going on all the time. The, the world simulation is telling them when to do these false flag events and all this chaos. And that's why it's working to a T. Okay. Um, they're using this, all our data that goes in on the internet, they're using that to predict outcomes. Okay. I had one more. Oh no, I just closed it. Uh, I did want to show y'all this one though, because I'm sure most people don't know about this. Alright, and this will be it. The Noah Hyde Laws, Universal Code for Peace and Unity. This is out of the, uh, another Israel newspaper. What I want to show y'all is y'all didn't even know this. Let's see where it is. There it is. That right there. President George W. Bush signed, signed into law an historic joint resolution of both houses of Congress recognizing the seven Noahide laws as the bedrock of society from the dawn of civilization. Now let me show you something else where they got those, where those, see, see this right here, the Shabbat Lubavitch, remember that? We know that. Where did this Noahide laws come from? We're about to find out. What are the seven Noahide laws as enumerated in the Sanhedrin 56a of the Babylonian Talmud? Understand what we're going into, folks. I'm telling you. We have, we have traitors in our midst. All these things are already in place. Did that say the Holy Bible? No. That said the Babylonian Talmud. Come out of her, my people. Okay? Understand this. And I could read this whole little deal to you. It's disgusting. And we get into the, it's not really seven laws. It's 66 laws. It's Judaizing. And it's the most disgusting crap you'll ever read. It's, it's essentially making us all slaves to them. No. And it's out of the Talmud. So anybody that tells you that the stuff I read to you from the Talmud is garbage, know they're a liar. I'm reading you straight from their talent. Okay? So let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for bringing us together again today. Let the seed fall on good ground. Father, open hearts and minds of the people that accept the message here today. I know time's getting short. I can feel it in my spirit. I can feel the spirit of hate and fear all around us. Father, give us the strength and the wisdom to make it through these times. Guide, us, guide our hands, guide our hearts to love one another, to step up when one needs help and help one another. In your precious son's name, we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Amen.